Member for Bass. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise today, like the member for Burt, to speak on the Proceeds of Crime amend Amendment, Proceeds and Other Matters Bill 2017. As we've heard this morning, um, this bill makes amendment to the Proceeds of Crime Act 2002 with the intention of closing loopholes that exist in our Proceeds of Crime regime. Specifically, these amendments uh, address a gap in legislation which allows criminals to structure their affairs to avoid forfeiture or confiscation of assets that were not lawfully acquired. Under the Commonwealth's Proceeds of Crime regime, authorities are empowered to trace, uh, restrain and confiscate the proceeds of crime against Commonwealth law. Uh, two relatively recent uh, court decisions have been referred to this morning which have prompted the government into action, consequently proposing the amendments to the Act that we have before us today. Uh, the first of these was Commissioner of, uh, of the Australian Federal Police against Huang, uh, which uh, was a 2016 uh, decision. Um, Huang um, was a, an application under uh, Section 94 of the Proceeds of Crime Act. Um, the particular uh, issue that arose there was the fact that um, uh, that the source of funds used by the offender uh, in order to repay a loan uh, meant that they uh, they couldn't trace or acquire the particular property. So if you'd paid down a mortgage, you couldn't. That didn't uh, thereafter taint uh, the uh, property that had been acquired. Uh, in response to this particular case, Parliament passed amendments to the definition of lawfully acquired within the Act, uh, which were intended to uh, ensure that where uh, illegitimate funds are used to discharge a le legitimately obtained security, such as a mortgage, uh, property or wealth obtained during, during uh, using the security is not considered lawfully acquired. I say again, uh, a criminal may well have uh, property which has been legitimately acquired subject to a mortgage. In this particular case, uh, the mortgage was partially repaid. The question was whether the legislation at that time enabled uh, the Commonwealth to deal with that property on the basis that it had been tainted by the money that had been repaid from the mortgage. The second case is a case of Commission of the Australian Federal Police against Hart and others, no relation I assume, um, which again is a 2016 case. That was analogous to the case of Huang, where we had a repayment of mortgage, but in this particular case, um, source of the source of funds which were used for repairs or restoration of a particular asset uh, were the issue in that particular case. So in other words, if you had a particular asset, such as a house, which had been enhanced, repaired, renovated, the question was whether the unlawful activity, again, tainted the, uh, the uh, property and whether the uh, source of funds used for repairing or res restoring uh, the assets could be relevant in determining whether there was forfeiture uh, of the particular asset. Um, the amendments serve to align the Commonwealth unexplained wealth regime with other types of orders uh, which are contemplated in the Act to ensure that those provisions cover situations in, wealth in which wealth is derived or realised directly or indirectly from certain offences. It also clarifies that property becomes proceeds or an instrument of an offence under the Act when they are used to improve the property or discharge an encumbrance, security or liability incurred in relation to the property, in other words, a mortgage. Lastly, the Act is amended to clarify that property or wealth will only be lawfully acquired in circumstances where the property or wealth is not proceeds or an instrument of an offence. It's important to understand the context of what we're talking about here today. Serious and organised crime is estimated to cost Australia $36 billion each year. That's a cost to the economy. That affects you and I. It affects organisations doing business uh, within the Australian economy. The Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission estimates that this equates to $1,561 out of every 
individual's pocket. I say again, $1,561 out of every individual's pocket. And of course, this is not money paid in tax. This is money lost to the economy. It is essential, therefore, that our proceeds of crime regime is kept up to date. The regime provides justice to the community by stopping criminals from financially benefiting from their crimes. Also, further crime is prevented by cutting off funding for future criminal endeavours and would-be criminals are deterred by reducing the appeal of illegal activity. However, given the scope and impact of organised crime in our community, it is clear that legislation alone is not enough to tackle this deeply concerning problem. We, on this side of the House, believe that it's absolutely essential that we properly resource law enforcement. Uh, it's not enough to simply provide for legislation which is able to be used by law enforcement if we don't adequately resource our law enforcers. Deputy Speaker, this bill will, will not and cannot make up for the fact that this government has cut Australia's law enforcement activity. As has been heard earlier this morning, uh, the other side, those opposite, claim to be tough on crime. They often come into this place. They talk about, for example, issues like mandatory minimum sentences, and they uh, beat their chests and they claim that they're being tough on crime. But when you look at what they're actually doing, how they're resourcing uh, our Australian Federal Police and we're enforcing generally law enforcement, you see that in the most recent budget, they cut $184 million from the Australian Federal Police. Last year, 151 AFP officers were let go, and the government also threatened the pay and conditions of AFP officers. Now, in my home state, we see the ongoing effects of these types of cuts. Uh, in Tasmania, for example, in 2014, the Abbott Liberal government removed all the Australian Federal Police from Hobart Airport. And you might ask the question, why would I, in northern Tasmania, be concerned about whether uh, we have AFP presence uh, in Hobart? Because we don't have uh, a presence of AFP in Launceston, and we haven't had for a significant period of time. The important issue, an issue which is totally lost on this government, is the fact that this decreased the total number of AFP uh, officers in Tasmania from 30 to 5 in itself an 84 per cent reduction in AFP personnel in Tasmania. And that affects the entire state. It's not just something that affects the capital city. Tasmania, regrettably, is the only state where the capital city airport has absolutely no AFP uh, presence. This has forced the diversion of Tasmania police resources um, from ordinary policing activity to uh, uh, the protection of Hobart Airport. This means that there are diversion of uh, precious resources away from community policing, uh, general crime across the state to protect a Hobart Airport. Now, it's undoubted that the AFP are experts in fighting serious crimes such as drug trafficking and organised crime, and it's difficult to know how many of these crimes are in fact going undetected in Tasmania because of this government's refusal uh, to fund the AFP properly or reinstate the presence of AFP uh, into the state. Last year, I'm proud that the uh, Labor opposition committed to reinstating an AFP presence at Hobart Airport to patrol the airport to prevent and detect crime and keep passengers and workers at the airport safe. The restoration of a permanent AFP presence at Hobart Airport will enhance our national security and improve security at the airport by enhancing law enforcement's ability to detect national security threats, contraband, illegal drugs, federal crimes and other crime. The restoration of this presence will also enable Tasmania Police to re-divert uh, their officers and resources back to community policing, which should improve community safety in Hobart and indeed across Tasmania. Under Labor's policy, the AFP presence in Tasmania will increase from five personnel to 21 personnel, with at least two federal uh, officers 
on duty at time at all times the airport uh, is open. This is the type of resourcing that ultimately allows law enforcement to do their job detecting and preventing crime and keeping our communities safe. This government is happy to keep lip service to give lip service on law and order, but so far we're yet to see a proper commitment to resourcing and supporting law enforcement in their incredibly important work. I'd also like to note that concerns were raised through the com committee process regarding several aspects of this bill. The Parliamentary Joint Committee on Human Rights, for example, recommended that the government undertake a detailed assessment of the Proceeds of Crime Act to determine its compatibility with a right, the right to a fair trial and the right to receive a fair hearing. This committee also noted that the proposed in amendments may engage and limit the right to not be subject to arbitrary or unlawful interference with a person's home, as the amendments affect orders that can be used to restrain and forfeit real property. Further, there did not appear to be a safeguard in place to allow the court to revoke a forfeiture order where a person has been acquitted of an offence or where their conviction has been subsequently quashed. It's really important at this stage to reflect upon the fact that there are some areas, uh, such as law enforcement, where bipartisanship is truly appropriate. We, we can't afford to uh, place national security, for example, uh, uh, in issue when uh, we're considering about the safety of, of our nation. And in this area of law enforcement, that also applies. But of course, we must consider uh, the rights of the individual. We also must consider uh, representations that have been made by peak bodies such as the Law Council of Australia uh, as to how, in practice, the amend these amendments might work. Um, the Senate Standing Committee on Legal and Constitutional Affairs reported on the bill. They took into account a submission from the Law Council of Australia to the committee's inquiry, which raised an important issue of proportionality stating that there is a need for proportionality which was expected, especially critical given that this legislation um, anticipates that there will be a low threshold in obtaining restraining orders. The legislation also contains strict exclusion tests and there's a very limited judicial discretion to prevent forfeiture and the operation of forfeiture uh, provisions. Just unpacking that for a minute, the issue of proportionality is important. It's something that I think that this parliament needs to monitor. The important issue is that if there is a trivial application of uh, proceeds of crime uh, to the reduction of a mortgage or to uh, uh, renovate or repair a house, one would what, not want to see injustice occasion, particularly to a perpetrator's family, where uh, a house, where an asset has been tainted by a trivial transaction. As presently drafted and as advised by the Law Council of Australia, that is something that needs to be considered and it needs to be monitored. Um, whilst Labor is satisfied that we should support the legislation through the House. It's perfectly appropriate that we do sound a note of caution with respect to issues like proportionality. Deputy Speaker, Labor will not oppose the passage of this bill through the House. However, that should mean that we should also be vigilant about uh, carefully examining uh, this legislation to ensure that it is sufficiently robust to address what are, have been identified as significant gaps in our proceeds of crime regime. We also need to be mindful that we do not uh, unnecessarily encroach on Australia's, uh, Australian individuals' rights and liberties. Uh, again, as I indicated earlier, there is a gap in many cases between what the government professes it is doing with respect to issues like law and order and how it actually implements legislation. Um, the job of a robust uh, opposition is not simply to oppose. That's why Labor is not opposing uh, this bill. But speeches like mine and the speech that was delivered by the member for BERT are really important signals uh, to the wider community that there are concerns uh, as to issues like proportionality, as to whether injustice might be occasioned 
in the uh, operation of this legislation. I thank you, Deputy Speaker.